For nearly eight decades, the NHL's All-Star Game has been an annual celebration of hockey greatness, a glitzy exhibition showcasing the game's biggest and brightest stars. And also, John Scott. Thanks to a concerted effort from the voting public, the little-known enforcer found himself rubbing elbows with hockey's finest at the 2016 All-Star Game, an unforgettable fish-out-of-water moment that hilariously flew in the face of tradition and ultimately provided one of the most memorable performances in All-Star Game history. When you think about the most electrifying hockey talents from the late aughts and early 2010s, a litany of all-time greats likely comes to mind. Sidney Crosby, Alex Ovechkin, the Sedin brothers, Steven Stamkos. One player who most certainly doesn't come to mind though is John Scott. A lumbering 6 foot 8, 260 pound bruiser who scratched and clawed his way to the NHL, Scott was a journeyman's journeyman an anonymous enforcer constantly bouncing around the league to whichever team needed an infusion of toughness at the bottom of its roster. Over his first seven seasons in the NHL, Scott played for five different teams, and sparingly at that. Scott was a frequent healthy scratch, never once appearing in more than 56 games in a season, and when he did suit up, he averaged barely seven minutes of ice time per game. During that time, Scott racked up more fighting majors than points and only made the occasional headline for running afoul of the rules, like his illegal hit to the head of Louis Erickson in 2013 that earned Scott a seven-game suspension. Ultimately though, like virtually every other fourth-line bruiser who came before him, Scott's career was mostly forgettable. So when Scott landed a one-year deal with the Arizona Coyotes in the summer of 2015, at the age of 32, it was hardly front-page news. In fact, the Coyotes press release announcing Scott's deal was all of 82 words. Funny enough, Scott was actually coming off a career year when he landed in Arizona, having set new personal highs in goals and points with the San Jose Sharks the season prior. In 38 games, Scott had totaled three goals and four points. But it wasn't his burgeoning scoring prowess that allowed him to extend his NHL career. The rebuilding Coyotes wanted some size, toughness, and veteran leadership, and that's exactly what Scott had to offer. And when he played, that's what he provided. But he didn't play much. Scott's debut with the Coyotes didn't come until their eighth game of the season, and he was far from a fixture from that point onward, appearing in just 10 more contests over the ensuing two months. Across that span, Scott recorded one point and racked up 25 penalty minutes. Scott, in other words, was putting up another typical John Scott season. But along the way, Something profound and unexpected happened that eventually transformed his 2015-2016 campaign into something far more memorable. Early in the season, on the popular Merrick vs. Wyshynski podcast, the two hosts remarked that it'd be nothing if not entertaining to see Scott play in the 2016 All-Star Game, which had just been overhauled into a three-on-three -three tournament comprised of four teams, one from each division. And critically, as part of the NHL's reimagining of the All-Star Game, the captain of each team would be decided by a fan vote. And fans were allowed to vote for anyone, even a 33-year-old enforcer with a grand total of 11 points in parts of eight NHL seasons. And they did. What started as a joke on a podcast quickly exploded into a full-on movement. Fueled by robust support on Reddit and Twitter, the Vote John Scott campaign caught on like wildfire. After one day of voting, Scott wasn't just the leading vote-getter in the Pacific Division, he was the leading vote-getter in the entire NHL, ahead of Ovechkin, Patrick Kane, and Yaramir Yager. For his part, Scott seemed to appreciate the hilarity of the campaign and said it was kind of neat to see fans inexplicably rallying behind him, but he ultimately acknowledged that he was no all-star. As Scott told AZ Central, I don't want to have my name in the headlines for this reason. I definitely don't want to be voted into the all-star game. It would be cool, but I definitely don't deserve it to this point. Yet, his protestations notwithstanding, fans kept on voting for him, much to the chagrin of the NHL. According to Scott, as the end of the voting period drew nearer and he remained in line to win the captaincy for the Pacific Division team, the league tried to dissuade him from going, telling him this is not a game for you and encouraging him to denounce the movement. However, despite their best efforts to get Scott to bow out and then to downplay the All-Star game altogether, the NHL couldn't stop the inevitable. 
When the league announced the results of its fan vote, the four players who had earned the honor of being an all-star game captain were Yager, Kane, Ovechkin, and Scott. John Scott, a 33-year-old enforcer who'd been placed on waivers three times already that season, the proverbial last guy on the roster on every team he'd ever played for, had been named an NHL All-Star. It was, all at once, hilarious, and bizarre, and heartwarming, and divisive. But just as Scott was relishing his unlikely honor, the newly minted All-Star was thrown a major curveball. With just over two weeks to go until the All-Star game, the Coyotes swung a shocking trade, sending Scott to the Montreal Canadiens as part of a three-team deal. And the Canadiens immediately demoted Scott to their AHL affiliate in St. John's throwing his availability for the looming All-Star game into question. After all, he wasn't an NHLer anymore. And around the game, the trade raised eyebrows, with some wondering if the deal was in fact concocted by the NHL and the Coyotes in an effort to kibosh Scott's appearance at the All-Star game. According to TSN's Bob McKenzie, the Coyotes had also asked Scott to bow out of the game, only to be rebuffed. Suddenly though, his moment in the spotlight was in jeopardy, and the voting public was so dismayed that another social media campaign was birthed. Hashtag free John Scott. Eventually though, the league conceded that it couldn't exclude Scott from the festivities and announced that he would still captain the Pacific Division team, despite no longer playing for a Pacific Division team and despite no longer playing in the NHL. He was going, and it was gonna be a weekend to remember. In Nashville, Alongside the game's brightest stars and some of the most iconic names in NHL history, nobody received as warm a reception as Scott, who responded in kind by turning in one of the most memorable performances in All-Star Game history. After holding his own in the skills competition, Scott stole the show in the All-Star Game itself, looking right at home competing with and against hockey's most electrifying talents in a format practically designed to expose his limitations. In the Pacific Division's first game in the three-on-three -three tourney, Scott put his team on the board 47 seconds in with a nifty tip-in goal. Daryl Sutter, coach of this team, said that everybody wanted to have at least one shift with John Scott, and there is a tie goal. And John Scott will get a standing ovation. Then, in a moment more true to form, Scott sent the crowd into a frenzy again when he laid the body on Kane. We are talking about how Brent Burns and Bill Pavelski, former teammates, and now Scott puts Kane on his wallet. In on a breakaway, save made by Rene. That hit, by the way, put Kane in a fighting mood. And Kane. <laughs> well, Scott chirped him before, and then Kane went right after him after he got steamrolled in the neutral. That's awesome. Listen to the crowd. And Scott wasn't finished either. Later on, Scott delivered yet again, extending his team's lead and helping them into the championship game with his second goal. Cut off by Brent Burns and tucked a nice pass onto Scott. Scott pursued. For his outsized efforts, after the Pacific Division secured a 1-0 victory over the Atlantic Division in the championship game, Scott was named All-Star Game MVP, another honor, incidentally, that came via fan vote. The Honda NHL All-Star MVP scored two goals in the tournament and wins as a right-in candidate, John Ultimately, after all that hand-wringing over allowing a player of Scott's ilk to play in the All-Star game, his performance ended up being one of the most compelling in the history of the event. From the NHL's perspective though, the entire saga was a PR quagmire, and the league quickly enacted a rule to help avoid any similar sticky situations moving forward. In 2016, the league ruled that players who are in the minors or injured won't be included on the active All-Star game ballot until they're back in the NHL. And if a player gets voted captain and happens to get sent down to the AHL after the polls close, the player with the second most votes gets the honor. The rule was immediately referred to as the John Scott rule. Meanwhile, for Scott, that night in Nashville effectively served as a ceremonious bookend to his eight-year run in the NHL.
Following the All-Star game, Scott spent the remainder of the campaign in the minors, save for one game with Montreal in the final week of the season. In a team low nine minutes of ice time, Scott recorded no points. In the third period, he took a high sticking penalty. It was the last NHL game he'd ever played, and it was emblematic of an unglamorous career spent throwing his body around, throwing hands, and protecting his teammates. Still, Scott will always have that one night in Nashville when he was one of the greats, when he got the loudest applause, and when he was the star of the show. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button.